Everyone makes mistakes when they first start out in astrophotography. It happens to all of us and that's okay. In this video, we are going over the five common mistakes that most beginner astrophotographers make and the first one we're gonna go over is not planning. So do you know the saying, proper planning prevents poor performance? It applies here. You want to know what is visible to you in the night sky. Now, a good way to figure this one out is to go into Stellarium, add your gear, set it to the date you're planning on taking your images, and just see what's visible to you at that time. You can also use this to plan ahead, you know, next week, next month, next year, the list goes on. Even though I'm recording this at the end of May, I'm already planning ahead for September, October, and November. Another thing that you should do is keep an eye on the weather. Now, I live in one of the cloudiest areas in the United States, so it is a good idea just to know when those pesky clouds are going to be around. And lastly, as long as you know all that other stuff, what's visible to you, what your gear is capable of, and when the clouds are gonna be around, you're gonna set yourself up for success. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. So let's move into the second thing, which is going too big too fast. So we all love looking at other people's gear and going, man, that Edge HD is awesome. I'm gonna get one of those one of these days. Don't do that right away. If all you have is a camera and just the lens and a star tracker, that's fine. Go out there and just practice the process with that setup. And there's something to be said about the simplicity of that setup because it also helps you learn your way around the night sky because you don't have a go-to mount yet. Now when you do upgrade to a telescope, start small. Don't go from, you know, a kit lens up to an Edge HD 11. You know, you want to start small and part of the reasoning for that is because it's just more forgiving. So if you start with something around 80 millimeters or less, I personally recommend sticking with a 61 millimeter or even a Red Cat. But if you stick with something smaller, it's more forgiving if your guiding is just a little bit off or if you're even not using guiding at all. If you use something like Again, the Edge HD, you basically need to use that small telescope as your guide scope and it needs to be on point. So basically, stick to the small scopes until you're comfortable with the process of using that small scope and then step up. Don't let gear envy or gear acquisition syndrome get to you. As long as you go in small increments, you'll enjoy the entire time you are out there taking images. Now moving on to the next thing it is being slightly out of focus. And it's one thing that I do see quite often on social media when you get people posting their first few images. And yes, this is even something that has happened to me even within a couple years. Now for my example, this is a Milky Way shot that I took a couple years ago. And if you look at it from a distance, yeah, it's fine. But once you zoom in and look at everything, yeah, it's a little out of focus. One of the big reasons that this one was out of focus is because I used Jupiter to focus with. So if you look again, the big spot, that is Jupiter. And from our perspective, even just from our eyes, yeah, it looks like it is slightly bigger than most other stars and that makes it not pinpoint to the camera, even with a 14 millimeter lens. What you wanna do is focus on a star because to the camera, a star is pinpoint. The other thing you can do is start using bat knob masks. So if your telescope comes with one, like say the William Optics ZS61, that's great. But if not, try to get one. And if you're still using camera lenses, you do have options for a bat knob mask. So if you're using a kit lens or anything about the same size and diameter as your kit lens, then you can get a UV filter and then a Batnov mask insert, and then you can just screw that onto the lens, and that is a proper Batnov mask to help you get focused. Now the combo for kit lens, which is 58 millimeters, that one is pretty easy to find. You can find the UV filter and the accompanying Batnov mask all very easily, even on Amazon. However, if you're using something like the Nifty 50, that's 49 millimeters. The UV filter is pretty much common and very, very easy to find. However, the 49 millimeter Batnov mask is not. Now I'm looking into finding an option that will work. And once I find it, it'll be down in the description. But for now, just know that it is kind of hard to find. Now for wide angle lenses like the 14 millimeter Rokinon, there are attachments you can put on it that go out and around the bubble of the lens and put a flat batten on mask in front of it. 
They are getting a little bit hard to find right now because production is slow, but the option is there. Lastly, when you're done focusing, remember to take the bat knob mask off. There are plenty of times where I've seen a post where somebody goes, God, I forgot to take it off. So definitely remember to take it off. And a little tip here about focusing with a camera lens. If you have a lens that doesn't have the ability to lock the focus, what you can do is just use some gaffer tape. What the gaffer tape does is it acts pretty much like duct tape, but it doesn't leave any residue. So once you're in focus, you put the gaffer tape on, and then if you accidentally bump anything just even a little bit, your focus will still stay on point. Moving over to the next tip, and that is skipping calibration frames. Look, I know our time is precious, and we try to maximize our time out there by getting as much data as possible, but calibration frames are important to the overall quality of the image. So what I recommend here is go back to step one, okay? Plan for it. So I would say plan for about an extra hour and a half just for dark frames. And the reasoning for that is that 20 dark frames at two minutes each is around 40 minutes. Might be a little bit more based on the interval you set between each frame, but it's an extra 40 minutes. Then you add in the flats and the dark flats or the bias, or if you're doing more than 20 uh, dark frames, it's gonna take some extra time. So as long as you plan for it, then you will have a great quality image after you are done putting it all together. But hey, for those of you that have already started and have made a few mistakes, what are those mistakes? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, moving on to tip number five. This is one that still kind of plagues me just a little bit, and that is overexposing. So a couple videos back, I started out with the ASI 294MC Pro and took an image of Bode's Galaxy. And guess what? It was overexposed. If you look at these stars, they're bloated and that's because I exposed just a little bit too long. I even had a filter on just to try to help keep things dialed in, but no, I overexposed. So a lot of people recommend to expose to the first third of the histogram. Now that is a good baseline way to start, however, you want to keep it around there and not go any further to prevent star blue. If you're exposing at two minutes and three minutes and the histogram really didn't move that much, go with the two minute exposure. That way you can keep your chances of causing star blue down a little bit. All right, and ideally for each object, here's how you want to do it for a single frame. For emission nebula, in a single frame, you do not want to see the nebula at all. You just want to see the stars. For planetary and reflection nebula, you want want it very, very dim, but for the brighter parts of it, if you see a little bit, that's fine. But for the most part, the dim parts of it, you don't want to see at all. And if you're doing a bright galaxy like Andromeda, you're pretty much always going to see the core and that's fine. You just don't want to see the details of the arms of the rest of the spiral. And this goes with other bright galaxies as well. But again, remember that if you bump up the time and the histogram doesn't move very much, go with the lower length of time for your exposure just make sure you're not clipping the left edge of the histogram. But hey, don't worry, stacking and processing will get your image to show up, so don't fret about one frame not showing the object. And a little bonus tip here for you. In the beginning, don't worry if all of your images don't turn out you know, crazy, amazing HD quality, and they don't have to be shared with anyone. Sometimes you can just go out there and take images and just practice just to practice without sharing it with anybody. And also, if it comes out okay, but you think it could be better, wait six months to a year and then reprocess it after you've learned a few new things. Maybe that one that wasn't shareable before now is shareable after learning a few new tricks. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.